with you mean? Hello everyone, I'm Allison. Welcome to another studio vlog. My goodness, it has been quite some time since I have chatted with y'all in a studio vlog. And I think May, the end of May was the last one. And so it's been over a whole month because we're heading towards the end of July already. And holy smokes, so much has happened. Um, here you'll see me working on a test knit that I started working on for Sarah who is Esnitz on Instagram, and this is the Alley sweater. She posted this quite a while ago, and I about died when I saw her sample knit up and knew that I wanted to knit one. So I tossed my hat in the ring to become a test knitter, and she was so awesome and happened to pick me. And so I am knitting mine out of some yarn that I dyed up. The main color is called Inoki. It will be in the shop. And I have not yet named the contrast color yet, but it is a really pretty foresty green with loads of variegation. And it will also be in the shop at some point, but I need to pick a name for it. I am knitting the size five and yeah, I've already split for sleeves. I'm cruising through the body and I am obsessed with this pattern. Um, you will have seen me share it on Instagram if you follow me there, or I've talked about it at length other places as well. That has taken my soul knitting time, really. It's just been this sweater. This is real time, so you can see the color work for me is slow. I use my left hand and my right hand whenever I'm knitting to a color, color work or stranded knitting. And if anyone has any tips on how to speed up color work, I am all for it. Um, but yeah, I am usually a flicker with my right hand and then I'm pretty slow with my left hand and I still have tension issues, but this seems to be working the best for me. And once this is blocked, all of those tension issues should be worked out. But my goodness, I just love it so much. I wanted to share a little behind the scenes look at something I recently set up. I watched a YouTube video over um, someone using Notion to really organize their life, essentially their small business, their life. And so I started a Notion. Um, I'll link it down below. It is free if it's for personal use. There is a premium version if you want to share with a team. So you want to have multiple people using the same one. Um, but I like it because whatever I put here on my laptop, I can also put it, it syncs to my phone, um, the Notion app, and then on my iPad too. So if I'm on the go and I need to jot something down, I'll quickly do that. This is what the dashboard looks like, and I actually took a template um, and tweaked it a little bit from the person's YouTube that I was watching. And so really it's just a simple dashboard. I've got links to all my other dashboards, a calendar, um, important reminders that I need to jot down. Like I'm still working on filling all of this stuff out. These were all just the preloaded images from the template that I copied. They're really cute. Um, but for example, I created one for Lofty Loops Yarns, and this has just a nice little quote um, to remind myself that the only competition I have is myself from yesterday. Um, yarn dyeing is a pretty saturated community, but honestly, I don't see any other dyers as competition. Um, if anything, I consider a lot of them my friends and we all help each other grow and it's fantastic. So just wanted to put that there. Social media can really get in your head <laughs> when it comes to competition and imposter syndrome. So nice little reminder. I've got some things here still working this out. These are like things that I've added to my calendar. So I want to make sure that I close the clubs and ship the clubs on a certain date and time. I need to finish my test knit by the 31st, so I put that in there. Um, ideas for new collections, I want to do mystery grab bags, and then I drop that calendar in again because it's always handy to see what the date is. And then a link straight to my admin area and just some fun images. And then this is my favorite part. 
Oh, do you see that? Shipment from Long Dog Yarn. Speaking of dyer friends, Brandy, super excited to get her new yarn club. Um, I'm gonna cover this up because there are names on this advent calendar table I just created and I don't wanna share people's names. But I created a new page and included a table and this is how I'm keeping all of my advent calendar orders organized. And so you'll see here, whoops, sorry, there was one name. So I've got my names here in the first column. And then the second column, I have tags in here so you can switch up which base they ordered and then whether or not they ordered an extra skein. So this year I offered either Mohair or Lofty Cloud if they wanted an extra skein to work in some projects somehow and the status of where they're at since I have done multiple rounds and if I scroll here a little ways you can see round two and three are not yet started and so that's really nice to keep track of whoops I'm sharing names again I'll wear those out um, but it's really nice to keep track of where the projects or where the advents are at so once they're dyed, then, and I get them all packaged up, I will mark as packaged, and then once they ship, I can mark them as shipped and just really keep track of them that way. I've got the round number on here just so I can easily filter by rounds if I need to, and then I actually added the links so they open up in Shopify so I can view the orders uh, just by clicking this link, which saves me a few steps, and I don't have to go to Shopify, hunt around, search for the order based off the name or whatever. I just got a quick link right here. And I don't know why this never dawned on me before, but it's been fantastic so far. And Patreon, I'm also, this is another template I just duplicated from someone, so I didn't find all of these, but I thought it was really cute. Um, but just working on adding all of my important things that I want to remember for Patreon. So I've got my quick links here. Um, so I don't have to go to my browser and search or whatever. I could just click it to open. The quarterly dialogue is happening very, very soon for the Loop Troop. So the next thing on my to-do list is to select an image. We currently are voting on that. And so we'll pick the image and then I'm going to prep and go live. And this week I uploaded vlog number 14. This month I've already shared the monthly coupon code. And yep, we've got the quarterly dialogue happening. And so this is really just kind of a way to keep things noted down um, and keep things organized. And so far it's really nice. I literally just have spent the afternoon a little bit this afternoon setting this up. So it's got a lot of work to do, um, but it is, it's it's going. Um, and so this weekly agenda is really cute too. I copied this template. I'll link it all down in the description if you're curious. Um, but here's today, I did have a massage this morning. This weekend is my niece's birthday party. And so this is just a really fun daily agenda. So you can put down your to-dos on a weekly basis and what else? There is a habit tracker that came with the template that I copied, but I'm not sure if I'll use the habit tracker or not. Um, oops, let me open up July. So here you can add drink your water, work out, uh, skin care, hair care, whatever, whatever the habits are that you want to work on. And then you can go through each day and check it off, which is kind of cute. And at the bottom here, you can actually calculate um, percentage checked. So at the end of the month, you can see what percentage you completed. So that's kind of neat too. I might play around with that, we'll see. And then my monthly calendar, which I'm still working on, is just the master calendar. This is where I'm putting all of the important dates. It doesn't have a lot on there because I've just started porting things over. But for example, I had a massage today, like I mentioned. I've got a birthday party tomorrow. And then uh, I wanna remember to close the clubs 
on the 18th so the July clubs will close and then I'll have this the rest of the week to dye them and then I want to ship them all out on the 25th. It's really cool because you can tag them with different things and so if it is business centric I can tag it if it's patreon if it's patreon deadline I can tag it or if it's personal and so then when you're looking here for example nothing is showing up right now because I don't have any patreon calendar events but they would show up in this list and I have this filtered to only show patreon things so just thought I'd share that um again this is new to me I've used notes before. I've used the Apple Reminders. I use Evernote at work and I just really like how you can customize this and kind of make it your own um, even though I definitely copied from someone else but I could definitely I, I mean I could see this evolving over time um, and making it work for me so I just wanted a jumping off point and again I'll link it below and I will keep you posted. If you have any tips or tricks or widgets or things that you use when you're using Notion, I'd love to hear about them. So please share those in the comments below or in Discord. I ended up taking some projects to the Frog Pond. And if you're unfamiliar with the Frog Pond, that is essentially where we rip it, rip it, rip it out. Um, which I have no idea where that came from, but it's so funny to me when we frog a project, that's where that comes from. So the first one is my gorgeous sock that I started working on, and this was for the Coffee Break Cal. And I just, you can see, I, I was sitting here debating on whether or not I actually wanted to frog it. Um, but in the end, I just wasn't super loving the the patterning on it um, it was just too much for my brain to think about in this moment and I actually started working on the sock on US ones and so I was a little bit nervous that the pattern plus the tinier needles the gauge would be just too tight and I would have been gutted if I had finished a sock and then it was too small for my foot so in the end I did decide to frog it out and sometimes you just need to do that. If something's not sparking joy or you're having second thoughts, there is zero consequence or zero, like you should have no bad feelings about frogging a project and starting over with something else. And I love this colorway from Hannah of Chromatic Yarns. This is her Rose Keep colorway, and it really deserved to be knit into a project that I was still loving. And so I frogged it and kicked it back up and it will eventually become something else and as knitters and I feel like anything else we do in life there is no obligation to continue doing something that you are not happy with um, obviously we've all we're all familiar with Marie Kondo and does this spark joy and I think as knitters if we're knitting something we're doing it because we enjoy the process of knitting and so if whatever you're knitting on you're not enjoying, then what's the point? Why are we still doing it? So go ahead and frog it, find a new project, or set it in timeout, come back to it a month later, six months later, a year later. And then at that point you can decide if you want to frog or if you want to pick it back up, maybe it'll be better served at a different time. At this point, I also decided I was going to frog my Glint Cowl. This was something that I cast on using my Glint and Glitter collection a few months ago, but I just really wasn't feeling the brioche pattern. I, I usually love brioche, um, but for some reason this just wasn't, I just wasn't feeling it. Maybe it was the colors or maybe it's just because it's really hot out and working with mohair and brioche. It just, it wasn't wasn't doing it for me so I actually went ahead and just clipped the yarn because I was not about to try to pull out that mohair I don't know if you've ever tried to frog mohair before but it will literally stick to itself and just end up in a giant mass of crazy amounts of tangles and I've heard that if you stick it in the freezer for a while you're able to frog it a little bit better and pull it out and it doesn't stick to its, itself so much but 
I just trimmed it. I wasn't gonna bother, so I just got it all off of the needle and then set it aside. So I haven't decided if I'm just gonna scrap it or if I'll actually attempt to pull it all out. But yeah, my goodness. So that was two projects officially off the needles because they ended up in the frog pond. But now I can use all of my brain power to focus on the projects that I do want to work on. And so that's very exciting. Hey y'all, it is Thursday. I don't know if you can hear my printer just over there. Um, I've been attempting to sublimate a bunch of things because I promised, you can see them just here. Um, I promised a friend that I would make her some shirts. And so busted out the heat press over there um, and my sublimation printer and everything. And all was going well. I was about halfway through making some exciting secret goodies for the advent calendars. And then all of a sudden my printer stopped printing my blue ink. And so uh, it's been it's been fun trying to troubleshoot that. I really wish I could show you what I'm making, but total secrets. Um, I can though show you the shirts I just made. So how cute are these? This is uh, her logo, and it is Cecil Caboose, and Cecil is her little dog, and so this is her cute little dog with a little hat. Um, but yeah, she has booths set up um, in farmer's markets and things, and so she wanted some shirts made. So here is one of them, it's just a razor back tank, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, so I, I made her some shirts, and um, I think she's gonna make me some cookies or something delicious in return. And yeah, all was going well, but I mean, obviously you can see that this like, really dark purpley blue um, printed earlier just fine. So I don't know where, where the heck it went wrong, but it totally just crapped out on me. So this guy is saying that all I need to do is to print multiple sheets of paper and basically force the clog away. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna see if this works. I guess on these lower end machines like I have, they have tanks where all the extra ink goes if you power wash like those lines and basically shove the ink through. And once those tanks fill up on the lower ends, you can't take them out and empty them. So once they fill up, basically your printer is done. You can't ever clean it again, use it again. You're just like the, it fires off something with a chip. I don't know, you can watch this guy's video if you really want all the details, but we're gonna try this, um, just start printing random things and see how many sheets I can get through before my blue starts printing again. Okay, so this guy says to run a full sheet of paper using cayenne, or cayenne, he said cayenne, cyan, oh my gosh. Um, so this is the hex code for cyan. Um, so we are hopefully just going to be trying to force through that blue that's not working or the cyan nozzle head that's clogged because here is my test and you can see the yellow is there. It's very faint, um, but it's definitely there. But yeah, you can see that cyan's just like struggle bussing there at the bottom. Um, so it's definitely clogged. Well, this doesn't look good. There's nothing on this piece of paper. So I hit it with the hammer and just went for the power cleaning. And you can see the before here and then after the power cleaning. So it definitely made a huge difference. And now I just have to remember to run this once a week so they don't clog up again. Now fingers crossed we can get this blue slash purple to actually print again. And it does, yay, it looks like it printed just fine. So I am back at it. So we're gonna do a quick haul uh, section. I don't have time to sit down and film a proper podcast. I just don't, there's Advent stuff going on. There's normal like life things going on. My schedule is just packed. And as much as I'd love to sit down and film a proper podcast, I just don't have the time right now and I have a pile of things 
that are starting to collect here and I want to get them put away and organized because I'm trying really hard to go through my whole office and just clean things up. Um, it's a huge mess right now. So I thought I would just quickly share some of the things that I received recently with you and then add it to the vlog. I want to sit down and film a whip parade or works in progress where I pull out all of my current projects, things that are on the needles, um, probably rediscover some things that I haven't seen in a very long time. Going to do that and so that will likely take up a very large amount of podcast time and so getting this kind of haul stuff or the stash enhancement stuff out of the way is probably just best to break that. Anyway, I'm blabbering. I'm just going to show you quickly what I got. So I hit up a couple D stashes and the first of which, gosh, I'm not even going to be able to remember whose D stashes I got these from, but I picked up a couple skeins of Treehouse Knits from the lovely Lauren. This is the first yarn of hers I've purchased and I'm very excited about it. These are beautiful. This is Skyfall and it is on her DK base. And so I grabbed these when I was thinking about colors for the Alley sweater test knit that I'm working on. And so this is my main color that I knew I wanted to use. I dyed these. This is my Inoki colorway and I was trying to come up with a contrast color and thought that those would look really nice together, which they definitely would. So that was kind of my thinking behind that, but I couldn't pass it up. There were two skeins in the D stash, so I grabbed them. And along those same lines, I have never had any Explorer knits and found these in a D stash and had to snag them as well. So look at those. This is balsam, fresh balsam on the Rockies DK base, which is 100% superwash merino DK. And again, I was thinking about color combinations. That would also be very stunning. This is kind of close to the color I decided to go with, actually. I don't think I have a skein of that around, um, but I will definitely be sharing that in the next proper podcast. And it might make an appearance here on the vlog, who knows? But. These are gorgeous. There were three of them. I grabbed all three. I got a package in from the Fiber Fox and she had had an update a while ago. And then during the update, I grabbed a few extra things that she had in stock because one doesn't order from the Fiber Fox all the way across the ocean um, without making shipping worth it. <laughs> At least in my brain, that's how I think. So I grabbed a couple skeins of her Merino singles that were dyed up, ready to ship. And this is Helm's Deep, which is a really pretty blue-gray, really awesome neutral color. And then this is Megara. And I thought this was really pretty too. Just purple with some speckles, dark speckles in there. So I don't know what these are for. I just wanted to add them to stash. So definitely my colors and I'm sure I could find something to make with them. Uh, this, this is what I actually, I the original order was for and hopefully they show up okay. This was her Witcher update. And so I grabbed a mini skein set of all of the Witcher variegated colors. How pretty are those? And I got her high twist sock, which is a 7525 superwash merino nylon. And I want to say they're 20 gram minis. And she had this other mini set in stock. And so I snagged it as well because you can't ever have too many minis, right? And this is blackberry picking. Again, on that 7525. I thought I could either knit these together in a project, kind of like a dark rainbow, almost like a very intense rainbow. Or if I needed neutrals for socks, for heels, toes, and cuffs, these would be great to choose from. I'm telling you, I have a lot of yarn, you guys. I don't know what happened. A lot of them were pre-orders that finally came in and then de-stashes. But I have been a part of the Cozy Knitter Yarn of the Month Club for a while. And so my June yarn came in. This is Candy Shop. I love these colors. 
She dyes self-striping self yarn, and I love her Bliss Base. I've knit so many Cozy Knitter socks. I think this was another D stash. <laughs> Again, going along the lines of trying to find a contrast color for the Alley sweater. Uh, this is actually Explore Knits as well, and this is the Acadia National Park. So I think recently she had a, a collection, a National Parks collection, and so this is what that is from. Sort of similar to Fresh Balsam. This is definitely more green, more of like an emeraldy, whereas this has a lot more blues and grays, but still kind of similar. And funnily enough, I think the one that I dyed to go with probably fits right in with these three somewhere. All very similar in feel. These I've had for quite a while and I just have not shared them. Um, and I would love to get them either knit up or put away. But I ordered from Coast to Coast. And this was part of the Mush Club or the Mush Collection. Um, which was originally a club and then she released it as a collection, a pre-order collection. And so this is the Brittle Gill Sock Set. And I couldn't resist this main color. It's so pretty. This is an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon. Um, looks like the same base as my sock base, which bouncy, two-ply, love it so much. And um, she dies out of Kansas, so not too far from me. And this is another sock set that I snagged from her during the pre-order. Can y'all see a theme in my colors I'm getting here? Oh, I actually have another cozy knitter. This is from May. So like I said, I've had these around for a while. Um, I just have not yet talked about them and then stash them away on the shelves. Uh, this is Rule Breaker. Ooh. This is Rule Breaker. This is the Cozy Knitter Yarn of the Month for May. This one's gonna be really pretty. I love this like corally color. And I did pop in to Knit Paper Scissors uh, quite a while ago. I started some socks already that you may or may not have seen, um, some striped socks, but they now carry Lobby and MA. And the only time I've ever seen Lobby N was in New York City at Vogue Knitting Live in 2020 before the pandemic rocked the world. We were there literally weeks, probably two weeks before everything shut down and New York was like, in a state of emergency. Um, but La Bien Aimee was there. I got to squish all the yarn and I didn't actually end up buying any there, I don't think. That's so bad that I don't remember. <laughs> oh, um, but could not resist grabbing these and I actually have ideas for these um, for a shawl that I would love to knit. So this is the Merino Singles Base and this is Totoro and Mai. Me? Me? Mai? Sorry, Totoro fans, don't come for me. But look at those speckles. Oh my goodness. So pretty. And then this goes with it perfectly. This is Lise, L-I-S-E. Lies. And so these two plus maybe some minis um, are going to become a shawl. That I think is my yarn haul that I've had stacked up over here for quite some time. It seems like a lot, it is a lot. Darn these stashes, I couldn't resist. Oh, and then I have these skeins that I dyed and set aside thinking that they would become a top for a sweater for me. I've not yet decided if I want to list them, um, but these are very similar to my Quartz colorway from Advent's Past. So just a really pretty pinky base color with lots of like goldy browns on top. 
and it's like doing weird things to the camera right now so it's hard to get a good picture of. Now I'm going to put all those away so thanks for listening to me chat about the things that I've spent all my money on. If you made it this far, I just want to say a huge thank you for watching this vlog. And I try to put one of these out at least monthly, if not sooner than that. You can always check out Patreon too, where I have additional exclusive vlogs and behind the scenes looks, and we get into the diet studio more over there. Um, yeah, I am going to wrap this up and I've got lots more advent prep I'm working on. I've got some orders just here that need to go out. I need to package up some more orders and I am going to be packaging up the July from Blood and Ash Yarn Club, Mystery Club. So uh, if you are a patron over on Patreon, you will get to see some behind the scenes footage of me dyeing that up and some of the goodies that are going out with those clubs. So I'll drop a link to that below. Otherwise, keep an eye out on Instagram for spoilers of that here in the next couple weeks. And the August club will be opening up August 1st. And I'm very excited about uh, the direction that this is going to go. So anyway, I will chat with you all very soon. Bye.